So I'm Catherine Ainsworth. I'm head of CSR at Smartbox UK. Um, Smartbox UK is um, the uh, company name for the two brands, Buy a Gift and Red Letter Days. So people have sometimes heard of the brands rather than the company itself. Um, and we specialize in providing um, gift experiences um, to customers. Our HR department have taken CSR very seriously. They've made sure that, that our work in the community um, and our work with employees has been exceptional, but we've never had a dedicated CSR um, department which mm -hmm. um, until about nine months ago. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're doing at the moment is bringing together the strands of all of the work that we've been doing already uh, within marketing, within HR, within finance and all the areas of the business to um, sort of understand where we are and where we want to be and to kind of plan that pathway. Mm -hmm. um, and my his my background is more within buy a gift and red less days has been more leading the sustainability work. I've been working on sustainability within Smartbox UK for close to two years now. And it's only recently that we've expanded the, my role to include bringing together all elements of CSR. To be honest, there is a very strong sense that we just have to. It's not about anything. It's not about pleasing stakeholders. It's not about um, being seen to be doing uh, the right thing. It's actually about doing the right thing. Um, we have a CEO who is incredibly engaged in um, the environment particularly and in ensuring that we have a positive impact. Um, and even if there were no customer benefits at all, he would still want us to be working on this. Um, so there is a significant part of it where it is genuinely just that it feels like it's the right thing to do. Um, however, we are also very much seeing that it's a growing area of concern for customers. They want to know that the brands that they're shopping with reflect their values mm -hmm. and take their impact on society and the environment seriously. Um, so it's about bringing that together and, and making that um, accessible to customers and our employees. Mm -hmm. The three kind of core pillars of the CSR program are um, the environment, the community and our people, which I think you would probably find that a lot of companies, when they look at CSR, they're, they're looking at those three core areas um, and understanding their impact and their involvement in all of those three areas. Um, our The work that we do with our people has always been to a very, very high standard. We've always been quite mindful of our um, our role as an employer. We've taken that quite seriously. We've, uh, for several years, taken place, taken part in kind of big industry-wide surveys and to kind of make sure that we're very clear what the benchmark should be and that we're pushing ourselves forward. And we've always um, done quite well in those and we get better each year because we take that really seriously and delivering on anything that we see emerge as a kind of issue out of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so the thing that is probably driving forward CSR at Smartbox at the moment is sustainability more than anything else. We are trying to um, lead the way in the industry on sustainable issues. There is nobody else, as far as we know, in our space mm -hmm. doing any work in sustainability. Um, and so we've kind of really focused on um, understanding our impact and then really getting into the detail of how do we minimize that impact. Um, so we are a carbon neutral company mm -hmm. um, and we have been for about 18 months, but um, it's, you know, being carbon neutral, you know, it's very important in many respects, but actually, you know, to be fairly blunt, you can be carbon neutral by understanding your footprint and paying for carbon offsets. 
that's not what we're about. What we're looking at now is how do we decarbonize? How do we um, move towards net zero? We would really like to be able to achieve net zero ahead of 2050, which is obviously the government's goal is for the, the UK to be net zero by 2050. We want to hit mm -hmm. 2040, maybe even sooner than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're working quite hard around sustainability at the moment. Um, and also um, trying to kind of move our involvement in the community um, more than just making kind of a couple of lump sum donations to charities every year, which we've done for decades, you know, since we started, it's been something that we do. Um, and really looking at how do we engage with the community on, you know, the money's important, actually, <laughs> the charities that we give the money to um depend on it so we're not saying that it's not important and we shouldn't continue to give back through charitable donations but there are other ways of being involved in the community so looking at volunteering days um also looking at pro bono work how can we potentially help um charities especially smaller charities say for instance if we've got a social media manager who wants to do a volunteering day could they actually do something that uses their skills potentially mentor or share skills with um, their counterpart at a charity rather than necessarily going to paint a community centre wall, which is great, but arguably not the best use of their specific mm. skills. So for sustainability, it's easier to kind of to define very objective, very specific science-based targets. So once you've measured your carbon impact you have a very clear number to attribute to your impact and you can then set yourselves targets whether that be to make a you know percentage reduction of your overall impact or to potentially target specific areas of your um uh of your footprint to to focus on so for, say for instance your downstream distribution or whatever it might be um does a fairly straightforward targets you know obviously you've got to do the complex bit of sizing your footprint and understanding your impact but once you do you can make those those targets um we also have targets around uh our employee engagement how they feel we're doing on various really important topics such as diversity and inclusion um, we measure those via internal surveys and also annually through an external survey where we benchmark ourselves against um, other companies and see how we're doing. Yes, I do believe it's absolutely central. I think if I didn't believe it was absolutely central, I'd be asking myself what I was doing and why I was doing it. Um, so yes, I do believe it's absolutely central to the organisation. If I'm going to be entirely honest, I think um, a weakness of what we're doing at the moment, um, which is probably driven by the fact that we're still fairly early days in 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 defining CSR and what we're trying to talk about um is that I think you feel that internally you see the evidence that CSR is important it's uh every single time we have a company update it's it's more often than not on the agenda. It's almost always what our employees ask about. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be something that um, the entire company gets behind. And we can definitely see that um, our team believes in what we're doing and believes in our commitment to it by our internal surveys. In terms of externally, I think if you were an external stakeholder, say a customer or or somebody um, who is interested in the business, I'm not sure it would be as clear to you. And I think mm -hmm. that's probably a gap that we are looking to address in the next year, essentially, mm -hmm. whereby um, just become a little bit more transparent about what we're doing. We are mm -hmm. doing lots of work, but we're not talking about it as much as we could be. Yeah. And I think that that comes from in in complete honesty, I think that comes from a place of not wanting to say or do the wrong thing at this early stage or hold ourselves up to be in any way um, morally superior or anything like that, because it's actually, um, 
you've got to be careful with these issues, you know, to be non-judgmental and to not hold yourself up as perfect. And I think, you know, in order to communicate successfully externally, I think you need to balance um, your awareness of that, you know. So um, I think that will be coming over the next year um, in terms of making our goals more transparent. We're hoping to make some science-based targets that's in the public domain. Mm. We'll have to start reporting on that. That will become much more transparent. And I think then it will be much easier for people to see our commitment from outside the company. We've always been a pure play digital company anyway. Mm. So all of that stuff has been around for us for years. There's been very little that I would say hasn't been digitalized for a while. Obviously, um, we've started working with you guys, mm -hmm. which has been, what, the last year or so. And obviously, mm -hmm. um, the work that we're doing is deepening and accelerating now. So what we would hope is that those sort of tools make it more vis it, it easier for more people to see what we're doing. When I think about CSR from before I took on any responsibility for it, I think about, you know, one of the first roles I had, which actually is, you know, getting close to 20 years ago um, mm -hmm. in a really big um, retailer in uh, this country. Um, and their CSR team was led by lawyers and was very much about due diligence and about making sure that what they were doing was compliant with the law um, and really much less about, you know, engaging with the world and much more about, you know, ticking boxes of, yes, this is legal and this is the minimum that we're, we have to do. Um, and so obviously that was a very different company from the company that I'm in now. But really how CSR feels these days is, is much more externally focused than that, mm -hmm. much more about your impact on society and the environment and much less about doing some due diligence. And obviously it's very important that you make sure that all your practices are compliant and that you're not taking advantage of anybody and that everything is just how it should be. But that's not what CSR is anymore. Yeah. And I think especially with the growth in awareness around the climate crisis and thinking about things like COP26, you know, the UK government made commitments at COP26 that all companies in the UK should have a plan mm -hmm. um, for how we're going to decarbonize. Well, I can tell you that most companies don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is going to be a massive growth area. You know, people are going to get very, there's going to be a lot of people really wanting to understand um, how they understand their impact, you know, how do they size their impact and, and how do they plan to decarbonize and what does that look like? And so I think um, CSR has become much more about sustainability than it used to be. Yep. Um, and I think that will continue. Sustainability will become a much bigger part of the CSR landscape. I think it already is for most companies mm -hmm. that are in the CSR space, but I yeah. think there are some companies that, that haven't really started thinking about this yet and they're going to be um, forced to start thinking about it um, as a result of, uh, you know, of the world being the way it is and the fact that we do need to really quite seriously look at how we decarbonize the economy. Um, so I think that that will become a much bigger part of it. I also think that um, uh, the really in, one of the really interesting and really inspiring parts of CSR, and I think one of the things that just naturally works um, across all levels because the team gets really engaged in it, you know, it's really um, uh, interesting part of CSR is the community outreach stuff. So, you know, how do you become a company that gives back to the community in a kind of real and practical um, and visible way? Um, and um, maybe particularly about how how companies engage with the local community where their offices are. I think often you think, oh, you're renting an office and you go to work and that's that's where it starts and ends. But actually when you when you are in a local community, you can really, 
you can really engage you can become a really positive part of that local community um if you want to be and i think that will be something that uh some companies start to think a little bit more about how do they engage with the community where they are i think the number one thing has been not to let perfection be the enemy of the good um by which i mean um and I think this is an issue that you can come up against, especially in sustainability, is that it's a bit frightening and you want to get it right. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody has a strong opinion. Um, and sometimes when you strive for perfection, it has to be the right answer from the beginning. You have to get it perfectly right or the whole thing's a failure um, can actually stop you from making progress mm -hmm. and it may be that you can't you know initially do that thing that you know will get you to um your goal so you know maybe you need to change your packaging on your product to make sure that it has the lowest impact on the environment and actually you know you find out that you can't quite do it the way you wanted to well, it's better to at least start going and to, to make the small changes than to wait until you can do it perfectly. Um, I think making any movement in the right direction is positive. It's better just to get going and and just make those those positive steps and maybe build on that and build on that rather than just constantly waiting until you know exactly what you've got to do and you get it perfectly right the other thing is to get the engagement of the team i don't know how other companies are structured but in our company csr is one person um and i advise i don't particularly do so therefore really important to get the engagement of the entire team from the leadership down um so the way that we do it in our company is the leadership team are behind csr as a as a as a as a mission, essentially, we want to be a company for good. Um, so we have a company-wide objective, um, which all the leaders have taken into their personal objectives and then cascaded down into their teams. And that's been very helpful um, in terms of aligning the entire team behind the goals that we're aiming towards. My third one um, is to try and be as flexible as you can <laughs> because there it is it is i have found the role to be incredibly challenging um it is quite difficult to do some of the things that we're trying to do mm -hmm. um and quite often you start down a path and then you'll meet a barrier and so i think being flexible um a little bit like the um don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good point you need to sometimes just come at it a bit differently and from a different angle and you know i think uh being prepared to compromise um and potentially change the way that you're looking at things has been quite helpful for me to keep my momentum up and to keep things moving in the right direction so kind link for us helps across and will help more as well as we continue to develop the features that we're using and things so it helps across a number of different areas so we started off using kind link really to to structure some of our charitable work and um, so it, it you know the first thing that we looked at when we were, were looking at uh, kind link was okay well how do we um bring together all the charitable work that we're doing because we were doing absolutely loads of work um loads of kind of staff fundraising loads of corporate giving um and they were kind of happening in different little silos and nothing was coming together in one area so you couldn't really ever just see all of the different things that we'd done over the course of you know a year five years or whatever so that was the initial kind of user case where we thought okay this is how kind link can help us mm -hmm. bring this together and demonstrate this internally to cut to our staff um the areas that we're actually getting more and more interested in now that we're using the tool and you know trying to develop our use of the tool has been around volunteering we're so quite interested to um look at how we can use the tool to um 
help employees find volunteering opportunities, get engaged with the community um, from the volunteering opportunities that are um, generated by the KindLink team, but also we can put our own volunteering mm. opportunities in there because we have charity partnerships and we sometimes have our own opportunities within those partnerships. Um, and the new area that we're looking at, obviously, is also the grant management side of things. Mm. What I will be looking at a bit more over the next few months is how do we, how do I use KindLink for more the kind of ESG side of things? So obviously, my background is is more on the sustainability side of CSR, mm. and I'm now starting to take on more of the kind of uh, community people side of things as well. Um, so. It's now looking at, you know, we do have a lot of goals around um, uh, sustainability. We invest in uh, offsetting projects, which obviously have their SG goals that we can align to. And so I'll be looking at um, that side of things to kind of bring it full circle so that it covers all of the um, CSR pillars for Biogift and Red Less Days.